You always birthday. pretend to sing, but you really don't want to. If I didn't cut you, uh, one time we just, I just won't cut you off, and then you'll have to actually sing. I want people to say, no, 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 don't sing, don't sing. But these yeah. two guys started singing. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just let you guys go through with it. Yeah, I didn't want to sing either. Nobody wants to hear that song, it. by the way. Uh, happy birthday. It's Nick's birthday show. This is VCR Party, the show where we're trying to watch all 11,000 VHS tapes uh, in the office here. Uh, I'm Joe. That's birthday boy Nick. There's Steve. There's George. And Nick, is that a new elf? Is that a present that you got? Yeah, there? that was uh, an early birthday present to myself, actually. Nobody would buy that for me. Um, sad, actually. Yeah. That's, I'm going to go ahead and declare that the saddest birthday present I've ever heard of. I uh, I got a gift card, and I thought, I know what I'm going to spend that on, and <laughs> found a custom neon maker and uh, spent it all on that. So okay, that's where I'm at. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, yep, everything's going great over here. We got... <laughs> We got some, we got some good stuff in the mail this week. Uh, take a look at this. Uh, Bob sent uh, this movie called Enjoying Beer, and it's like I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. He said the audio is really bad, but it kind of feels like a scimitar movie where they're just like, oh, this is a thing that people like. Let's make a video about it. Yeah, we could oh. sell it at bachelor parties or. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's another one. Uh, is that pronounced Taoist? Is that how you pronounce the Taoist? Taoist. Yes. Yeah. Feces exercise. Ooh. So yeah whoa uh and the guy who said it said the cover is really the best part it's an hour of an old guy rubbing his belly while bending over in different directions that doesn't sound that bad though doesn't sound that bad no and uh i got uh liberace's uh valentine's special which we've shown a, a couple of previous valentine's days but i just think you know this is our last show before valentine's day and it's worth a revisit um and i also i found this tape what well, I was going to say about Liberace, like we have a decent Liberace collection over there. Yeah. And do. all his videos are very entertaining. And very long, very long. Yeah. Having cut the clip from this, it's a, I think it's a over a two hour show. And the other one I found was, uh, <laughs> this one I found the other day, my mom taped this for me. It's Wired Al, seven ninety nine, <laughs> And I uh, put this sticker on here, which indicates that it's a, a music um, oh, good. That helps yeah. categorize yeah. things. Good. The yeah. weird thing is, is that um, she taped this for me. I was like living in New York, working at the Letterman show at the time. This wasn't like, oh, Nixon high school and he had basketball practice. Let me tape this for him. I was well into like having an adult job and living on my own. But I somehow I must have like had my I didn't have DVR yet. So I probably my maybe I didn't have cable at the time. So I've just probably asked my, my mom to tape Al TV and uh july of 1999 like so. that's what adults do though right they, i guess they ask, so yeah ask their moms to record the weird, weird l thing on them on tv for them. i said mommy <laughs> al tv is gonna be on Can it's gonna be so it? funny <laughs> um, i'm excited to watch it though hey let's get into a, a found footage festival classic this is um i want to play this one this has kind of become a tradition uh nick had a public access show i want to say in volume three called talking beards it was a public access show on M and How long did it go? Twelve years? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, a long running show. Things have slowed down with COVID, but it's still going. Yep. And uh, so I want to play two clips from it. These, these these are two scenes that you had. You had Chris Elliott on multiple times, and really? uh, yes. the first one here he gives uh, Nick some beard advice. So this is a public access show that Nick made called Talking Beards. 
Um, but uh, do you, do people come up and remark to you about about your beard? Uh, well, they do, and the first question is, you know, what what are your grooming secrets? You know, how can I have a su supple beard mm -hmm. like you? And and of course, I say to them, you know, uh, well, if I told you my secrets, they wouldn't be secret anymore. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Chris, we do have a lot of younger viewers watching the show uh, who might be thinking about growing a beard, and uh, who better to ask for advice than than Chris Elliott? <laughs> Well, I guess what I would say is what I say to, to any young person uh, uh, hoping to get facial hair, and that's uh, when I was a young person, uh, everybody around me used to say, uh, oh, Chris, there's no way you're ever going to grow a beard. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Look at you. Mm -hmm. uh, and now look at me. I mean, now I'm, I'm living proof that miracles, or at least beards, do happen. So I guess what I would tell the youth of America who, who want to grow a beard is, is uh, never give up on your dreams. Wow, that's, that is really in, inspiring. I mean, it's really good advice. and I, It really is. I mean, and, and you can apply it to lots of things, but it, it works with beards. Okay, so the second, this next one, um, what, what, when was this on, Nick? Two o'clock in the morning on Tuesdays? Tuesdays, yeah, 2 a.m. Okay. That that's was the only slot they had for me, right yeah. after a, a thing about rabbis. <laughs> okay, well, um, this next one, you take some viewer calls with Chris Elliott. So. Right. Here we go. Caller, are you there? Do you have a question? Uh, on, you're on Talking Beards. The yeah, connection. hello? Yes, you're on Talking Beards. Yeah, I have a question about Chris Elliott's beard. Yes. Uh, my question is, eat shit, you fucking asshole. Uh, Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> Very funny. Well, maybe I will. <laughs> okay, I get it. It's really funny, right? You call in, make fun of the, the guys with the beards, right? That's, that's your thing. Makes you feel like a real man, right? Well, let me tell you something. Real men have beards. That's right. And I, I'm sorry. This happens that's every, all right. every show. And I, to, I, I don't even know why we keep doing the call-ins, because it happens every week. Well, they don't specifically say my name every week, do they? No, no. I'm that's, not on the show, so that doesn't happen every no, week, No, not it? that. But uh, this guy, I, these teenagers have nothing better to do. We're trying to do a serious public affairs show about beards. And, and these teenagers just call in. It's all right. And, uh, he sounded a little older than a teenager. But yeah. Okay. I, well, I'm sorry. All right. I want to thank my guest, Chris Elliott. And, and Chris, would you mind sticking around uh, for our next segment? We're doing a panel discussion. No, okay. Um, uh, we, we do have a panel discussion coming up. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, beard. I forgot the book. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, beard dandruff, what you can do to prevent it, and uh, how you can get those embarrassing white flakes from not being. Oh, the coffee. Okay. Um, so I want to welcome our panelists uh, to come out. I think you handled it very well. Yeah, yeah. Just not I, distracted at all. No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> very professional. Long running the show, yeah. Uh, Steve, what is, I just noticed your background is very colorful. Yeah, I put it in a little late today because I didn't want you to see it beforehand. But um, uh, a, I guess it's a new nonprofit called It's Okay Sexual Man. Mm. It's to help people who are embarrassed that they're such sexual men. And they had this wonderful mixed media artist make this. And I think I have to double check, but I believe this is going to be available for sale if people want to get posters made of my background. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it, it shows. It's a nonprofit. Yeah, I, I saw that they've used a lot of your photos. I didn't really have a chance to, to, to check yeah, it out. Yeah, it's funny. That is so, that was the only one who has access to those. It's weird how that... Uh, it's so happen. nice of... Of that, uh, was there a nonprofit? Yes, that? yes, okay. yes. They just want to get out and make sure it's okay for first. It's okay. Sexual man is the name of it, but I'm so sure in it's... other words, for like a man who's like has very like is has very like sexual and very yes. sexual nature, but then tries to repress it. I think it what it right. is. Right. Yeah, it's the repression that they're really trying to stop and just okay have them run with it. Is this yeah. one of those nonprofits where like the CEO, who I think is Joe, is drawing an exorbitant salary? <laughs> I, you know, I actually, I do not do any background checks about any of my backgrounds. Okay. So oh. I don't well, that's know. Ironic. And don't ever start, Steve. <laughs> no, <laughs> nope. yeah. Today is not the day, certainly. Well, I'm, happy to, be an I'm happy to be an ambassador for that worthy cause. And, right. um, and if I could, you know, if I can just be made uncomfortable by one thing tonight, I think I've done my job as a birthday boy. Good. I just noticed, like I said, I didn't have a chance before, but his number one hobby is making love and being sexual with his partner. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I it is. That. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, who's How that? The CEO? Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a picture of Nick in an American shirt. Oh, okay. So I don't know if they're mm -hmm. referring to Nick or the CEO. Okay. I, I, once again, I did no research on this. Gotcha. 
Well, this is the show where we show off VHS tapes, and uh, I we've noticed that a lot of them have flying windows in them. We made them into a segment called This Week in Flying Windows. Christopher from Washington uh, sent this in. I thought this was a unique one. You know, just when you think you've run out of different types of flying windows, check this out. This is... Uh, oh. A store that they went into in Washington, and those are literal flying windows. They're hanging on a string in this, looks like a store called The Loft, maybe? Oh, my God. It's finally happening. Yeah. So it, they've flying windows have come out of video toasters from the 80s, and they've actually uh, manifested in real life. Should we be concerned? Like, is, is this yeah. like a, is this, could this be harmful to us? I think it is. And uh, I, I, what's more concerning is that I just had this up and um, something actually started to happen. They went from being real life um, flying windows into flying windows of flying windows. This is, this keeps happening. Oh, the pro. Holy. Yeah, they do look dangerous. Crank it up. See, that one was coming right at us. So oh, that's cool. I like the borders yeah. too. The, Colorful yeah, borders different there. colors. Yeah. So yeah, they manifested from being real life flying windows into video flying windows, and it's a the, it's a slippery slope. The future is here. Um, yes. Hey, this is a this is a tradition that we do, uh, where I call up Red Robin and ask them to wish you a birthday greeting. Now, for those people, the three people who don't know about Nick's history with Red Robin, we were on a road trip one time, maybe ten years ago. We stopped off at a Red Robin, and I took a picture of Nick. We were Give very hungry, and there was nothing I could eat. Oh, and, yeah, he's uh, vegan. So uh, I uh, snapped this photo of Nick, and I, I didn't think it was terrible. I tried to upload it onto his Facebook. He took it down. I put it back up. He took mm -hmm. it back down, and then I tried to put it up again, and uh, he had unfriended me and, like, reported me for cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but, you know, this is the thing that Nick and I have is this Red Robin thing. And so I called up Red Robin last year. I think I called. Hey, wait, wait, five... just you—you you didn't think it was that bad, and that's why you continuously uploaded it to my Facebook because you yeah. just thought, nice picture of Nick. I want people to see it. Give him a thumbs up. Look at you're positive. You're posing yep. for the, you're posing for the photo. It's not like mm -hmm. I caught you, caught you like you know. Yeah. Well. Did in a compromised position. You're giving thumbs up. You're didn't didn't like... consent for it to be publicly posted, but that's okay. Uh, but go on. Yeah, we stopped at the Red Robin. Then you called last year. So last year I called up five of them. And uh, I found one that wished you a birthday greeting reluctantly. And this year I was just like, it, it was, it was like pulling teeth last year. So this year I'm like, I'm just going to call the actual one that we went to mm -hmm. and that's it. And ask them to do a birthday greeting for Nick. And uh, here's how that went. The inset is the red Robin. Hey, my name is Joe Pickett. I have a weird request for you. My buddy's birthday is coming up. And his name's Nick. And it was probably, I want to say maybe 10 years ago, we stopped off at that Red Robin where you're at now. And I took a photo of him where he looked like Dom DeLuise. It was a terrible photo. And I uploaded it to his, his uh, Facebook page. And then he took it down and then I uploaded it again and then went back and forth for a while. And then uh, finally he unfriended me on Facebook. So I'm, I'm no longer friends with him on Facebook, but we're friends in real life. But I'm wondering, okay. I'm wondering for his birthday, if you can say happy birthday, Nick, from the Red Robin where Joe took that photo of you where you looked like Dom DeLuise. And I'll record it and I'll play it for him on his birthday and he'll love it. Okay. And what was the name? Uh, Nick. And I'm Joe. And what was the name? Dom? What was oh, the Dom DeLuise. He's an old comedian from like the 70s, 60s and 70s. Dom, D-O-M. Deloise. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Happy birthday from Red Robin, where Joe took a picture of you, where you looked like Dom Deloise. Happy birthday, Nick. Yes. <laughs> wow, first one right out oh. of the gate. Oh. <laughs> and I did. I a wish lot Dom of Deloise was alive to see that. Is he dead? <laughs> Yeah, many oh. years ago. Oh. What, you, what what happened? You so, uh... well, I I call. I mean, that was the first one. I I have some more calls throughout this episode. Oh, and uh, but that was the first one I did. And after that, I was just like, I was flying high. And yeah, yeah. So, and I think the thing is, okay. last year, a year ago, restaurants were busy. 
No, they're not. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Everyone except Bazingas, which apparently is still booming in Wisconsin. Oh, I didn't call no Bazingas. One no maybe, one knows there's a pandemic there, apparently. Maybe you, can, um, maybe you can call Bazingas today and just tell them that it's your birthday and ask them to wish sure. you a happy birthday. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Will you do that? Well, I, even if I could make, I don't know, three people uh, uncomfortable and waste their time, I think I've done my job as the birthday boy. Okay. All right. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, Feels okay. like it's a stuffed show. Oh, this is this is like a three-hour show. We've just begun. <laughs> oh boy! So, um, all right, Nick. So, uh, I'd I'd like to see your hot little raviolis, and uh, before we do that, I put together a new little uh, uh, intro graphic for uh, the raviolis that maybe we can use it in the future. Just watch it and just see what you think. All right. Nick's hot raviolis. Nick's little little hot raviolis. Nick's Nick's hot hot raviolis. His little little little, 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 little raviolis. It's Nick's hot raviolis. Nick's little little little, 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 little raviolis. Nick, Nick's hot hot raviolis. His little little little, little hot raviolis. What do you think? I think it might be a one and done. Yeah. I think that might just be. I wasn't yeah, asking I, you. I wasn't asking you. I oh, asking, okay. Uh, George yeah. And Steve. George, Steve, what do you think? I, I thought it was how, good. How did you? How did you? Um, how did you get that vocalist to do the show? It wasn't cheap. It okay. wasn't cheap. But yeah, I had to call in. I had to call in a lot of favors, and I had to take a loan out from the bank. Okay. So the original reason we called the show to Raviolis is because we show we just <laughs> clips to each other, and we found a comedian on a public access show saying show me your raviolis as i'm just gonna leave this introduction to you yeah yeah there's this explanation and, and that's yeah. what we used to show for the intro to this segment right and it had nothing to do with me or raviolis being a dirty thing or it was no just, but you know joke think, about italians uh but i think i think that change is good for a show like like that and mm. i think that that's like a really peppy like gets you excited fired up for the scene for the mm. for the uh, segment all right um, I got, I, some go first? Hot, I got some hot little raviolis for you today. Great. Yeah, why don't you go first? All right. Well, yeah, it's my birthday today, but uh, on uh, it's Valentine's Day on Sunday. And this is, like we mentioned, our last show before Valentine's Day. So I had some Valentine's clips pulled. I had the Liberace video. And then I thought of our old friends, Fred and Sharon from uh, British Columbia. They made a, a video called Who Needs a Movie? Advertising their services as video producers. They did dabbled in animation i think it was mostly fred's baby and he sent us a bunch of his footage and then continues to make these and uh i found oh, i think fred bunch... died though last year didn't he? no no fred's still yeah. around i think he, fred's uh, dead. He, he, no he and he and sharon are not together but fred's he just made a video you sure week. yeah okay yeah I he in my head a... that fred was dead no no he's he's alive and well and still producing videos and dead to uh, sharon yeah apparently they are they are split up but here's a video um Actually, several uh, Valentine's Day videos from Fred and, and uh, both with Sharon and without. Hillary. Hillary. You're on camera. Smile, everyone. Uh, hello. This is the man with the camera. And I'll take a picture of you. And this does this have audio as well on it? Look what Fred got. Really beautiful. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh yes, it's zooming. Okay. Oh, I like that. Can I say something? Yeah. I I've realized something that I really enjoy in in shots in like camera mm -hmm. in like camera photos and in shots of video fans in the background like box fans in the background. I just love them. Yeah, fan they never look the good. Yeah. <laughs> how do you feel, how do you feel about salad dressing in the foreground? Are you okay with that as well? It's a one-two <laughs> punch. Happening. It's a one-two yeah. punch. So this is a gorilla that sings and dances to wild thing. Oh, oh yes, it's zooming. Okay. Oh, I like that. You think you love me? <laughs> I gave this to Fred for Valentine's. And I a gave car. This for Valentine's. You can your friend. Turn your life into a happy party. Click on subscribe. Some people have commented on your nice thinness. Thank you, Some have gone. Goodbye.
as far I guess I will start by going I to their YouTube channel I didn't at edit Fred this. Spencer P. U. I didn't edit this ending. This is exactly how the video ends. I think we just need to watch this one more but time. But all here. those audio, all that audio on top of audio, that was how it was? Yes. Okay. The, the, I did not alter this at all. That was a mistake on your part. Okay. Turn your life into a happy party. Click on subscribe. Some people have commented on your nice thinness. You. Thank you, Some have gone Goodbye. as far I guess I will start by going to their YouTube channel at Fred Spencer PU. I'll click on subscribe and get lots of information that way. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day, everybody. everybody. Where the heck did this water come from? So happy Valentine's Day from Fred Spencer and Sharon. They're not together, but they still are on YouTube. And he's so. he's definitely alive. Maybe I had a dream yeah, that Fred I mean, Spencer died. I had it in my head that he was dead. Sounds like a nightmare to me. Yeah. No, no. Uh, he's got an active YouTube channel. And ah. uh, yeah. Still, I think still somebody emailed in about that or, or wrote something about that in the... Uh, message boards but about his death they said that he yeah died? But weeks ago but if, if he posted something new that maybe that's where i said indicate it. Okay. alive yeah i'm pretty sure so well i'm sorry if that information is incorrect but uh i, I pulled some fairly recent stuff from fred's youtube page okay this is this what i'm going to show it's not vhs it's footage of nick doing uh dumb things so we we do like the two word phrase challenge we've done that before like on the show where we uh, I, I will give Nick two words that he has to say on a college show and uh, he'll he'll work it in. And we did something recently. So last week we talked about Rad Thrilled. Remember Rad Thrilled? Like with Lil Marky? Let me just play it again in case you haven't seen it. It's um, a phrase that this religious uh, comedian performer did. That well, it's, we were yeah, it's, it's a, yeah. And it's just like, is this even a word? And uh, so here's a Lil Marky Saint Red thrilled. I am thrilled to be here this evening. This is neat, an excellent crowd, a good spirit. And I'm just incredibly rad thrilled. What can I say? Years okay. ago, and I was about this high about Okay, so and I want that word to get more popular. I want I need I think it should get out more. So I challenged Nick the other day we were doing a college show. What was it? Westchester University. I think we had twenty five yes. kids there. We do these virtual shows now. And we're we're kind of on autopilot for them. So we tried to spice him up. So I challenged Nick to work in the word rad thrilled as many times as he could. And I set the over under at five. George, Steve, do you think he went over or under five rad thrilleds at this college show? He's an overachiever. I'm going to say over. I'm going to go with under. I think that's okay. a tough, tough word to work into. Okay. All right. Here is. I, uh, I don't know the answer to this, actually. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I call it the red thrill to meter. All right, here we go. Hey, Westchester. How hey, you doing? Everybody. Welcome to VCR party. Thanks for coming. We are incredibly red thrilled to be here. My name's Nick and that's Joe. Wow, he is red thrilled about jump roping. Yeah, here's Harvey Sid. Uh, this is what he looks like fairly recently, and uh, what a great, what a guy. I mean, we yeah. were red thrilled just to see him, and not only did we see um, him, but yeah, that so clearly they just had no standards about who they let on, and and uh, we were red thrilled to be on that show, and you will be too. Just go spend the rest of your yeah, life. Yeah, but I'm about to watch Karate Size, and I'm incredibly red thrilled about this. So that's we cool. just took different paths. We saw yeah. Nancy across the we, stage. I think we know what that would sound like. He'd he'd be red thrilled if he saw Nancy, but we weren't able to. We're gonna still reunite. find out. This, this is, is yeah, absolutely you're great. You were talking out of your ass before. This is my yeah. personal favorite. I am red thrilled to show you Pet Parade, which possibly is happened. That would be exciting. Oh, whoa! Rad thrilled! Exciting. Woo! That's exciting! Eight oh, rad thrills. Eight. Wow. Nick, yeah, I, probably could have, I probably could have squeezed in a few more, too, if I'm being honest. Well, I think you could. You didn't do one on the way out, which I was just like, I uh, hope you guys were red thrilled to see us. Bye. You could have, or just like, you know, something yeah, like I that. could like have just one. before hanging up. But uh, I think I was fatigued. I was red thrilled. I was red fatigued at that point. So, yeah. yeah. I imagine uh, did, all the kids are now using it in their, their school. You think uh, it well, caught on? Yeah. Well, Nick, I was going to ask, because you always monitor the chat during that. Did anybody say, uh -huh. like, what does red thrilled mean? 
No, but uh, they weren't very active in the chat, uh, <laughs> just in general. So uh, they they might have uh, been rad thrilled, but they were you, silent think, about like, it. After they heard it four times, that then the word yeah. would start to register, right? And once they heard it yeah. seven times, that it would definitely <laughs> register. I think they just thought I was like an old guy and was like using, you know, like Mr. Burns sort of speak, you know, like if I said that I was chuffed to be there or something like they just must have thought, oh, it's outdated lingo. He's an old man, you know? Yeah, but using it eight times, like it's <laughs> suspicious. Yeah, it was suspicious, but uh, I don't know. I guess since we're not doing the shows in person, we can't even see people like whispering to each other. Like, did he just say Rad Thrilled again? We don't get that satisfaction. Um, hey, I, let me, I have a, 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 let me play another one. Let me just play a okay, quick one. Go ahead. Uh, Tim sure. sent this one in. Nick, you had a waterbed when you were a kid, right? The only child in the United States of America that had a waterbed. I, I begged for one. And then finally in high school, I got one. Yep. Okay, so the uh, Tim sent this fantastic waterbed commercial that I thought I'd play because it's your birthday show. So, oh wow, great! Um, yeah, here it is. Experience a better night's sleep. It can happen on a waterbed. Does it look like a crime scene photo? Yeah, <laughs> it really does. <laughs> it's like they're dead. That moves. So much support and comfort. Doctors recommend water beds for patients with back problems. Oh, like a bed and spread. the styling of the water yeah. bed, you decide. <laughs> Another crime scene. That looks like you and that looks like the two of you. It uh, does. That oh, does yeah. it. oh, that could be. In an episode of Quincy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when we were guest stars. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You spend one third of your Great life in bed. Shouldn't you yeah, make yeah. the most of it? Evening tides water beds with three convenient Evening locations. Tides. We want you to experience flotation sleep on a water bed. It's just like, it's just like, I feel like just swingers would have water beds, wouldn't they? Like, they said, did you uh, buy a water bed today? I you don't, don't see know. Them any, any, you don't no, see them anywhere. Right? They've just completely gone from the They world. said that it was doctors recommended it for people with bad backs. No, it gave <laughs> me a bad back. <laughs> It was it was awful. I mean, and the other thing they don't tell you about water beds is, you know, you're on heated water, but that's great in the winter. But in the summer, you just are sweating. I mean, <laughs> no matter how much air conditioning is on, you're sweating. But did you stick it and, out uh, just because you're just like, well, I, I got the water bed. I got to. I, yeah. I made my bed. Yeah. In fact, I, I upgraded to one that had baffles in it, so it didn't rock as much. But yeah. And I even brought it to college at one point and had to drain it. And yeah, yeah it was it was bad. But yeah. To the dorms? No, no, not to the dorms. To uh, my place on First oh. Avenue. I thought maybe I'll maybe I'll <laughs> put the waterbed there. No, it didn't work. So there's just so much work. You'd have to drain out this stagnant water with a hose and then refill it back up like every few months. And the water just smelled bad because it was just sitting in a warm, you know, <laughs> plastic well, bag. Basically. And I remember staying overnight at your house when we were like in sixth grade. And yeah, and I would sleep on that. You can't sleep on that. You're just no. always moving. Not with two people. No, it's completely, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I, it looked cool. It was cool to, felt cool to have a water bed. I liked it. I, uh, I last week, no, no, I think it was a, for your birthday, Joe, which is about a month ago. We, uh, I found a Rainbow Bright um, birthday video and um, there's a singing part in it. And I added a commercial jingle to it. And I was thinking, what if that same Rainbow Bright birthday song, you know, what if you could dub over, you know, other music over the birthday song because it just it worked perfectly it was like how the wizard of oz and and uh pink, oh, pink floyd, floyd yeah. you know, sync up perfectly and uh so i thought let me see if i can do it and i i decided to try to sync it up with some of my favorite outsider artists um so here's the first one this is uh rainbow bright and i'll i'll explain who we're gonna hear from first in a, in a second <laughs> an idea i'm going to teach you all a happy birthday rainbow song that'll make every birthday you'll ever have a happy one first we'll sing it then after that i'll call out the words and you join in okay i got a vision this is jan deck oh. teenage daughter Who's growing up naked in the afternoon? Yeah, that works. That totally works. Yeah. I know a brother close to his mother who 
stays out late in that evening. You, you edited in the song. Thank right? you for inviting us to your yes, birthday party. that was party. on the original. We had a lot of fun, and we hope you did too. Okay, so that one worked. I thought it was pretty seamless there. 100%. Jan Beck, the uh, hard to track down guy who really self released out. Well, it's, it's just uh, a, it's a danceable song. Label. It's a danceable song, yeah, yeah, for Rainbow Ride and all the kids listening. This is uh, one of my favorites. This is, um, I wanted to see if Wild Man Fisher, the outsider artist Wild Man Fisher, would fit in here. Mm-hmm. I'll call out the I'm words guess and he does. you join in, okay? Come on, Larry! My name is Larry, my name is Larry, I have an auntie, her name is Becky. Hi, Becky! Hi, Larry! My name is Larry, my name is Larry, I have an auntie, her name is Annie Estelle. Hi, Annie Estelle! Hi. Thank you for inviting so us that, to your I birthday that party. Too. We oh, had that, a lot that. of fun, and we hope you did too. But Again, the best very, one, very danceable. Another very, very danceable, danceable song. Yeah, yeah. So everyone's familiar with the Shags, a legendary, um, you know, family group with no formal training, and their hit song was called "My Pal Foot Foot," sung by the two uh, girls. And you know, the children sang the song. I thought it would be good for a children's video. I'll call out the words and you join in, okay? My pal's name is Football Foot. He always likes to roam. My pal's name is Football Foot. I never find him home. I go to his house, knock at his door. People come out and say, Foot Foot, don't live here no more. Thank you for inviting us to your birthday party. We had a lot of fun. I would they say that I, I think the Shags was the best one, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that, that one's synced because up. it was the most danceable. Yeah, and I think that could be a new birthday series. So, George, Steve, you have that to look forward to. Outsider artist mixed with Rainbow Bright's birthday video. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> uh, okay, so speak. So we do these two word phrase challenges. Whenever we're touring and we're, we're getting on a flight, I will do these. Um, kind of like a two word phrase challenge, except I'll just have Nick say like two sentences, two dumb sentences to a flight attendant. And the, the, the first one that got us started was I told Nick, I whispered to Nick before we go on the flight, before we enter the plane, I'll say I, this, this particular one, this is the first one ever I said, ask if they know if, the, if there's XM radio on this plane. So he asked and he goes, and they said, yeah, there's XM. He goes, ha, ah, don't mind me. I'm just an old trip hop DJ. And then they don't know what to say. And it's just, you know, kind of awkward. Uh, <laughs> and so, there's usually 200 people behind me also trying to board and I'm holding up the line. And you're also saying this in front of all the people in first class seating too. So <laughs> right. it's yeah. like we just want to take off. Yeah. And they yeah. don't care that you're a hip hop DJ, <laughs> trip hop DJ. Nope, not at uh, all. No. So, so then we started taping some of them and then I was looking for them and I found some. And these are gold. So I put together. Uh, I, five of them. I don't have. I don't have many. So I think I must have sent them to you, and I don't know where they are. I don't are, think we recorded but, many. I made a big yeah. long list of all the things that I ever told you to say on airplanes to flight attendants, <laughs> and uh, I was in tears reading it. Like, and just your delivery it pu- on these. Published are, it as a book. That, well, I actually already started it. I wanted to talk to the Melindas about that afterwards. So, okay. Okay. Uh, here, here's a uh, Nick boarding airplanes and talking to flight attendants and looking dumb. Usually like 6 a.m. too. Oh, I love this. Hello. <sighs> Thanks. One week down, I left my saxophone in the States. I'm going through withdrawal. So <laughs> I say it in a joking type manner. My sax is my therapist. So looking forward to having it back. <laughs> How'd you think that went? <laughs> so you Great. said it. Yeah. <laughs> I say that in a joking type manner. You always like for me to explain things. Like I say this with a wry smile. You'd like me to narrate how I'm saying something to them. I always want him to say, I say in a joking type manner. Uh, yeah. I, I, you, you say it a couple times on these. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, the, okay. Here's another Bye. one. Bye. Thank you. Too. Thanks. I think I'm smiling now. Wait, I'll get a golf club in my hand and a Michelob in the other. <laughs> Can't thank you enough for all the time. So you get a golf club in one hand and a Michelob in the other. 
I think that was going to Scotland too. I feel yeah, like a lot of these are in Scotland point. and Ireland. Yeah, as if they know what Michelob is. <laughs> Any idea what uh, elevation we're flying at? Uh, Thirty-eight thousand feet. Okay, sounds like my golf handicap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just... Captain will make an announcement. Oh yeah, give you the exact figure. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's I don't even golf. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I don't even golf. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Captain will make an announcement. Oh, I'll yeah? give you the exact figure. Uh, okay, that's fine. I that's don't even go. So. Yeah, okay. so, but Captain will give you the yeah? exact figure. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, all right. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Thank you. Straight Thanks. It was late night at the casino last night. Good for you. Yeah. Did you win? Well, buddy's rolling dice saying, uh, baby needs new shoes. And he's like, it's got to be the shoes. Hope they're Air Jordans. <laughs> All right, Marty, 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 Marty. Where are you going? Yeah. Uh, Marty was barking to get out. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So, you, so can we just? Recap? Got, it's got to be the shoes, which was the old Marv Blackman <laughs> Nike <laughs> campaign with Michael uh -huh. Jordan. Right. Got it. Uh, he said, "Baby needs these shoes." I said, <laughs> "Okay, uh, yeah, baby needs these shoes. Make mine Air Jordans," is what you said. <laughs> Hello. Thanks. Finally get to uh, get to my saxophone in New York, so I'm looking forward to that. Right. <laughs> I say in a joking type manner that my sax is like my therapist, so I'm going back. Nick, did he care? <laughs> no, he just wanted me to get to my seat and not hold up the uh, approximately 140 people uh, behind me. <laughs> I say in a joking type manner. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you, you must have not liked my performance on the first one and, and said, do this one again. Yeah, I will ask Nick to redo some if, the, if it's not to my liking. So but I, I remember re there was relive the pain and un discomfort. Yeah. There was one that I was laughing so hard on. It was probably six o'clock in the morning. And I always have to walk in front of you because if yes. I walk behind you, I'm laughing so hard that they know something's up. Right. So I have, to, I have to get ahead of you so that they can't see me laughing. And I remember one time I... I was laughing so hard that I blasted out a big fart, like boarding the. Plane. Yeah, I remember, remember that, that too because I was behind you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember and I that. couldn't even hold it. Like, and I have like and pretty usually... strong <laughs> sphincter muscles. Like, and like I right, was right. You people should know that about you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you often will drop something to give me more time to get out the stupid thing. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just like, just go. I got in what I'm going to get in. I'll I'll drop like my plane ticket and then yeah. like and then I'll be rummaged so that Nick can say the whole line. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Buy him some time. So, all right, I think there's one left. Thanks. Whew. Almost missed my pants on the landing, just all in right. time. <laughs> no reaction. No reaction. <laughs> no reaction. <laughs> wait, wait, did you hear at the end, though? She what said, uh, on the way out, they said, uh, well, let's listen to it. Again. Almost missed my pants on the landing, just all in right. time. Thanks. Enjoy your sex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. So wow. those those are the those are the five that I found. Yeah, uh, and most of those aren't recorded. Those are just things we do because we have nothing to talk about uh, while traveling on tour. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. And it's like you know, we do it. Con we did it constantly. It would get so boring. We had to spice it up a little bit. So there's another one. I was just I was flipping through my list, and there's another one where you you entered the you got on the plane, you boarded the plane, you go. Well, we haven't even taken off yet, and I'm already flying high because I just proposed to my beautiful fiance, Shenandoah Peterson. My heart <laughs> is huge with love. <laughs> do you remember that one? Yeah, the sincere ones are the hardest to do. There's ones where I have to talk about my um, my daughter's spirit and Curtis Ann and how I love them so much. And yep, yep. No, wait. I think Daddy's going to give them lots of kisses. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. I think the ones that you hated the worst were like doing knock knocks where you'd say knock yes. knock. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd be like, all right, all right, I just started my 14 hour shift, but okay, who's there? I'll play ball here. Yeah. And then it was uh, like up, 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 up and away. That's Superman because we're going to take off. It was something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it made no sense. I'm well, the funny guy who likes to be funny to the flight attendants. The idea came from, <laughs> the idea came from like boarding the planes and like there would be like, dummies that would get on and try to be funny with the with the flight attendants so i always wanted you to be that dummy right so <laughs> yeah. um so but i have a whole i have so many i started putting together like a book in uh like photoshop and i was just like oh this we're gonna self-publish this thing and make millions <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna sell 15 copies um but if there are any graphic designers out there people know how to make books or lay it out i have all the content i have ideas for it 
It can almost be like a Deep this. Thoughts with Jack Handy style book. That's what I'm picturing, like a Deep yeah. Thoughts kind of a book. Yeah. And there's yeah. just so many of them. Yeah, yeah we and, should uh, and I'm in put tears. it on Patreon, if nothing else. Oh, for a sure. digital thing, but wow. Definitely. Yeah, um, well, I, I don't miss not flying in a lot of ways. Uh, <laughs> I, I have one more clip I could show that I was pretty excited about. Yeah, um, play it. So our buddy JC just sent us this video that I think a friend of his sent him and he just knew we would appreciate. It was labeled, it's a YouTube video, it was labeled Brugger's Bagel Bunch. Brug, and I think they meant Brugger's, which is a chain of a bagel chain, but they called it Brugger's Bagel Bunch. I think that's all it needs to be said. Okay. Yep. Well, it says Brugger's there. Yeah. <laughs> Put Brugger's in the, okay. Yeah, they, they called it Brugger's, but they spelled it. Not Brugger's. No, but I think here's my theory is that they worked at Brugger's. Oh, I think I could have talked over it actually, but uh, <laughs> I don't think we're gonna miss any action-packed scenes from the. It's it's dinner at uh, this place called Ricci's or what is yeah. it? Yeah, Ricci's. Oh, but they all um, worked at Brugger's. I think that's what it was, and this was like because this is their Christmas get together, so they're not gonna shit where they eat. In other words, they're gonna go to a nice restaurant. They're not gonna get bagels with. Sun dried they're going to eat where they shit. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, They're not going to shit at a Brugger's. They're going to so shit that, at... That's my theory. Either that or there are a bunch of coworkers that get together at Brugger's for bagels, but for Christmas, they decided to go to a fancier place. Okay. But you tell me what the... It's very layered, this video. Yeah. Ah, uh, the Brugger's Bagel Bunch. So, so now, do good. they bring their own triscuits or do uh oh good question were there triscuits it's up there the best time yeah yeah, of the year. yeah. Oh, oh, open they must have brought their my, my window's really small here oh yeah there are triscuits out there unexplained yeah restaurants mm -hmm. usually don't have that on the menu yeah, <laughs> yeah they say no outside food or beverages but <laughs> well, they definitely the no outside trus triscuits if, the if you're part of the Bruggers crew yeah. yeah they do not give a fuck <laughs> I really like the editing on this. It's the best time the of the I want to like stage our own version of the VCR party bagel for our fun. Yeah. But I have a good Look at how I think he's like mid. He's like doing something. Yeah. <laughs> and when you this is a, they're, they're all punkins. The Look at this. They story. are. That's a total punk. Yeah. Most people are closing their eyes. Know, and yeah. And they're doing it on purpose. I mean, this is not flattering of either of them. Oh, the I kind of like this. This guy's pretty cool. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Total joke. That's such a joke. Somebody really put a deal to a photo right across the face. What? I said, where do you want to put the names? How about right across the face? <laughs> <laughs> Under the eyelid. How about. <laughs> I mean, look at all that spot on the, this spot on the shirt. It'd be perfect. Yeah. Somebody waits for Slow you. Slow page peel. Kiss her. Kiss Joe once for me. Have a holy jolly. Why did Joe get two pictures? I don't know. He got it just quick. Look at this photo. It's <laughs> like something. It's like, you know, that's worth unfriending you over Facebook over. I mean, that is not flattering of anybody. Ah, uh, memories. I like this Ooh, guy. Like Cannoli. <laughs> Takes his place on Jimmy. Dick and, yeah. Yeah. It's one of their friends. So it goes Joe, Cannoli, Jimmy. <laughs> and another half eyes closed. Yeah. They're like, this is a good Classic one. Classic Ricky. Yeah. So wherever you are, Brugger's Bagel Bunch, you're really delighted. It's almost weirder if their eyes are open. Yeah, I know. You, I just got so used to them being closed by the end of that. So, yeah. That's um, all. And those are Nick's Hot Little Raviolis. And Cannolis. Nick's hot raviolis. Nick's little little hot raviolis. Nick's Nick's hot hot raviolis. His little little little, 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 little raviolis. It's Nick's hot raviolis. Nick's little little little, 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 little raviolis. Nick's, Nick's hot hot raviolis. His little little little, little hot raviolis. Now, well, I don't like the content of the lyrics, but I gotta admit it's catchy. Thank you. You know, I I was actually very proud of myself. I, I don't normally make music, and I, I made music there. 
Yeah, sure did. Real Joe Blevins on that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, we, Nick, we got birthday greetings here. Oh, great. Um, there's a guy. Who, who did I you don't... inconvenience this year? <laughs> Well, you, for my birthday, I mean, you really, like, knocked it out of the park with, like, asking everybody. So I really had to step up my game. So, oh. Nick, do you remember a guy named Rem Lazar, or a video called Rem Lazar? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we I, thought it was Canadian, then we thought it was religious. No, just a weird video from New York. Yep. And uh, so there's a certain uh, birthday greeting from a certain uh, Jack Mulcahy. Wow. Yep. Are the brothers McMullen, too? Yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was him. And the uh, commissioner of the softball league in Manhattan that I'm going to play on this the year. the union, Hopefully. yeah. Yeah. Hey, Nick. It's Rem Lazar. I'm here to wish you a very, very happy 49th birthday. <laughs> no, and you know 49. what, Nick? I was actually going to gift you your very own Quixotic medallion. But, alas, it's gone. Again. Oh. Fucking bull. <laughs> anyway, I would just take it as a sign that you and I should have our very own journey through your heart to a far and distant land and go find it and the highest point of the imagination. Also, I would like to wish you the best of luck on your sabbatical from VCR Party. I understand that you are doing a continuing education in all things ALF. I think it's essential that every person should know as much about ALF as they possibly can. Yo, Willie! Anyway. Whoa. I hope this finds you well and in good spirits. And remember <laughs> to reach with your heart, my little one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so, he's got he's got it all there. I mean, not 49, but other than that, I appreciated all the sentiments. First of all, that's how I learned about your sabbatical from VCR Party, about how you're actually going to uh, go out and you're going to... Uh, I study all things elf. I can't wait. Yeah, it's a, it's going to be a personal journey for me. So uh, uh, also, also, I want to start calling you my little one from <laughs> now on. <laughs> I think Jack can pull it off. But. I'll be like, welcome everybody to VCR party. I'm Joe. This is my little one. This is George. That's Steve. <laughs> and I'll just be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just acknowledge it. Uh, okay, so Nick, a couple months ago, we sat down with your sister to watch a Saturday morning cartoons, and then I requested an interview with her, and I've been sitting on it for a long time. Uh, lots of new information in this. Steve, I don't think you've seen it. George, you were there for it, and Nick, you were there. You said it. Yeah, I didn't it, like but, it at all. Um, I got some great information out of Nick's sister, Jess. So uh, here's my part one of my exclusive interview with <laughs> Nick's sister, Jess. I'm here with Nick's sister, Jess. We just shot a Saturday morning cartoon and I wanted to do a special Q and A because it's always fun to find new information about Nick, you know? <laughs> is like, it? it? It is, it definitely <laughs> is. There's always new stuff that pops up. So I just, yeah. I just wanted to compare some notes. Okay. Okay. I'm first on, question, yeah. first question, what's Nick's deal? Like what's his deal? <laughs> Ooh, uh, how much time do we have? <laughs> I, oh, had hunch, I had a hunch this would be respectful. This would just be kind of a get to know you thing. And I, I wasn't expecting any sort yeah. of ambush. This, was uh, on the up and up, this all seems on the up and up to well, me. It's, it's the question that people always ask me about mm -hmm. that. They're like, what's his right. deal? And I was like, I don't know. I have right. no clue. So I what still I don't, you would know. If you don't I know, I still that's don't fine. know. I've known yeah. him for 43 years. I, I don't know what his deal is. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, that's the right answer. Okay. Yeah, okay, no good. Answer. Okay, yeah. good. Um, best and worst parts of growing up with Nick. Oof, I can answer the worst parts. Yes. Let's, um, we'll stick with okay, that. we'll go worst first. I'm not gonna say tyrant, but I will say. You don't need um, to say that. Okay, I will. Um, I will say that he took his role as the older sibling quite seriously. Um, Did he make you watch Alf? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Like, oh, like I know we, what that's like. Oh yeah, exactly, or George. Like we said before, there wasn't a lot of. Um, I didn't really get to decide anything. Okay. Um, he was more of a taker. He wasn't much of a uh, a giver. That's correct. Okay. That is correct. I remember one time when I was getting picked on, he stepped in. Uh, but after that, I don't. Yeah. So that would be the best part. He actually. That would be the best in. part. Yep. That would be the best what part. What did he do? I've never heard the story before. Uh, what was happening? It was, I think he would have to walk me to school. Cause again, as we mentioned, we were latchkey kids. So he would have to walk me to school when I was like kindergarten, first grade. And I think there were kids picking on me. Um, 
and I remember for him. obvious reasons. Uh, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, he's just not a good person. Uh, <laughs> next question: uh, Has Nick ever farted in front of you? He farted in front of me once in two thousand seven, and and that's it. Um, I honestly can't recall. However, I can recall that I did in front of him and his high school friends. Um, Intentionally? He, uh, no, it was, I mean, honestly scarring. I was trying to get to the one bathroom that we had, the one bathroom that we had, and he w was stopping me. He was holding the door open and said, no, you can't go in, you can't go in. And all of his cool, you know, cute high school friends were there and he wouldn't let me go in. And there was a good reason I needed to get in there and I farted with the door held open and it was the worst, like, I mean, 25, 27 years later, I still working through it. Nick, do you remember this? Yeah, all? I stand by that decision. And what I remember is that you were up against the wall. So it has extra loud. It kind of amplified it. Wow. Next. Yeah, behind the door, you were pinned against the wall. I thought Probably. I was a terrible brother. Here, I thought I was a terrible brother. It's oh, no, you, yeah. were. you were. I was, I was but yeah, I, I never did. Well, maybe I did do that. Um, <laughs> so much worse than that. Do you know, do you have any idea why he's a shy farter? Like, is your family, are you guys all shy farters? Oh, yeah. Are you a shy, you a shy farter? Oh, for sure. Yeah, uh -huh. it's it's a lot of shame that had we had instilled in us. We were raised Catholic. I don't know what to say. Like you think it that's, was that might have something to do with it. Maybe. Don't you think? Like the yeah the, it, but is there something in the Bible about not farting in front of people? I yeah. think there is, right? It's the, yeah, it's the Leviticus. It's the, yeah. it's the ninth <laughs> commandment. Where are you? Where were you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's the uh, hard hitting interview part one I had with wow. Nick's sister Jess. And, Good info, uh, and that's why people tune in, not for the VHS content. <laughs> They want to know about my sister and I's childhood. About why you're a shy farter. Yes. That's why they want. <laughs> that's what. Yeah, the I think that's what know. they come in. Yeah. Uh, but that, but I thought there was some good information. You like rescued her from like bullies, but then you also like held her up from the bathroom, made her fart in front of a bunch of people. So yeah, sometimes you're the bully. Sometimes you're the protector from bullies. It's you know. Okay. The yeah. Nick Pr the Nick Pruer story. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I realized um last week that. Uh, that uh, Carl Stitz, who has been sponsoring math corners in the show, he didn't get one in December. We owed him a math corner. And I always ask George as a, as a math enthusiast, are you, would you call yourself a math enthusiast? Well, yes. I can't hear you. Yes, yes very you much are? So. Okay. So you, you find VHS and related math clips. They've been all winners so far uh, in this sponsored segment, right? Yes. Uh, this math corner is sponsored by stitzzieger.com pre-calculus textbook maybe you or someone in your life is about to take a pre-calculus course or perhaps you finally realize that every aspect of existence can be understood as a multivariable mathematical function either way stitzzieger.com is there for you right now with a free online textbook This is the special Nick edition of Math Corner. Oh, Warner. wow. Um, right. Hence the squeaking, squeaking uh, mattress at the end. Um, oh, sexuality? Maybe. Um, so this week we're going to show another clip from the classic PBS math series for aspiring young Euclid's Square One television. We're going to go to October 7th, 1991 for a math song about the basis of mathematics, patterns. And who better to sing a song for birthday boy Nick Pruer than one of his heroes, Alfred Matthew Weird Al Yankovic. Wow. Nice. Everywhere I see them there, I stop and stare at patterns. I don't care, I must declare, I've got a flair for patterns. On my hair, the clothes I wear, my style while fair is patterns. All I see is patterns, the patterns that repeat. Let's go into the bathroom. I know we're in a room where you would not expect much math. Usually you're in here for a shower or a bath. But if you gaze upon the floor and if you're kind of smart, you'll see the repetition is like geometric art. Hey! A polka meister like myself never has to be bored. I just grab my axe and play some patterns on my keyboard. Now's the time for earplugs if you care about your health. So stand back, everybody. I'm gonna express myself. Wow, Look at that! 
Any okay. kids got the it's helter time to skelter find yourself reference. at an exciting polka oh. party. You can make some patterns with your feet and with your body. If you don't know the steps yet, here's the gang with all the answers. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Weird Al Polka Dancers. Here they are. Again, this is math corner. <laughs> So I'm wishing you happy birthday on behalf of mathematics in general. Wow. Thanks, mathematics. <clears throat> My favorite math corners are the ones that don't have anything to do with math. <laughs> Those it, are the best does, ones. That was all math. I know. Patterns square are one. Fractals and yeah. By the way, a former um, VCR party guest, Craig Rowan, who uh, was the one who found, uh, was the one for boys, basic training for boys. Yeah. And watched it with us. Yeah. He, uh, San Francisco Sketch Fest just had their benefit show and it ended with triumph the insult comic dog and weird al doing a parody of us of the song chandelier but it was called mr belvedere craig rowan wrote that and weird al didn't have to but he made sheet music for it and gave it to craig so uh next time he's on the show he'll have to show it to us like that's yeah that's pretty yeah it was like his make a wish except he's fine you know it was like (laughs) his first concert was a weird al concert and uh yeah so a little little bit of weird al trivia for you um, okay, so Nick, in 1994, you shoplifted an Incredible Hulk video game from a Shopco. Uh, yeah, still ashamed a, of it. Don't like to bring it up. Don't like uh, talking about it. Right. <laughs> it was this department store in uh, Wisconsin. It was it was a it was a major one. It was like as big as Target. Uh, they're gone now. Now they well, this is this is what they look like. Okay, so that that's what they used to look like. Now now they're out of business, and they're just Shopco optical. Just the just the eyeglass centers survived. So I last year for your birthday, I called them up and I asked if they would forgive you for shoplifting the Incredible Hulk Sega game. And they said yes. So this year I decided just to call back and just check in and see if everything's still cool. Shopco Optical, this is Carlos. Can I help you? Yeah, hey, so um, my name's Joe. I do a show called VCR Party. My buddy Nick... It's his birthday coming up. And tw- I think it was like 27 years ago, 1994, 1995, he had shoplifted an Incredible Hulk game from Shopco. And he got banned from all Shopcos, like for his whole life. He was 18 years old when he did it. The cops came and everything. And, um, you know, he's just, I, I, I'm sure that he wonders if you guys are okay with it. And last year I called you guys and you said you're okay with it. I just want to make sure that you guys are still okay with it. Like, like all is forgiven. Uh, as far as I know. Great news, oh, Dick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, he doesn't look like a Carlos, but uh, wow. Uh, Great call. Great call. Yeah, there's plenty more where that came from. Uh, as far as I know. <laughs> so you feel you feel better now? Like, are you going to yeah, sleep better at I night? Yeah, I feel free okay. of guilt. I feel, yeah, I feel like everything's better. So okay, thanks. Okay, good. Very good. therapeutic. Appreciate you bringing that up. George, we had talked about doing like a special, like mystical sort of um, spiritual thing. Nick's a very spiritual person. He's very into new age medicines. New age uh, miracles. New age miracles. He's... No. <laughs> No. So uh, I was thinking, do you, do you want to kick this off? or? Yeah, wanna, so okay. I wanted to get Nick a message from someone famous, but this is one instance in which Cameo just wouldn't cut it. So right now we're going to attempt to make contact with the other side. So please, everybody join hands. Join hands. So we turn can off your lights. A, so we can get a message to Nick. Okay? Turn, on your, turn on your fog machines, everybody. All right. Okay. Oh, it's already happening. Oh. 
Wow, what? that was fast. It's We're summoning somebody? Yes. Nick! It's yes? Michu Mazeros! <gasps> the petite Hungarian fellow inside the costume of your hero, Gordon Chumway, better known as Alf. I'm contacting you from the great beyond. I want to wish you a happy birthday. And I want you to know you'll never be alone. Just as I was inside Alf, and Alf is inside you. By the transitive property, I am inside you. Watching all the flavorless, partially digested vegan foods pass by. Nick, I want to thank you for keeping my life's work alive. Through your ALF recap show, Willie's Garage. Available on YouTube and Facebook every Wednesday at 9 p.m. It is truly a testament to your love of all things ALF. Despite the severe social consequences of a man your age worshipping a wisecracking puppet from his childhood. Mm -hmm. But I ask you, please, free George from the show. Sorry, Mitri. Your co-host always looks like he's trying to find a window to jump out of. Come on, man. He doesn't even bother to put in his contact lenses to film it. I can't do it, Mitri. Okay. I must go. Happy birthday, Nick. Wait, Michu! Don't go! Whoa. Michu! Whoa! Oh, he disappeared. Wow. Wow, uh, I'm out of my trance. What oh. happened? George you just channeled Michu. We just watched it, uh, an Elf episode where they did a, a trance. Ooh. Wow, wow. Uh, so, are you gonna free George, or are you gonna? Absolutely not. I mean, I love <laughs> I love Michu, but he's gone. So, oh. yeah. Uh, oh. Nope. We still uh, we're still in it for the long haul. I think we even have twelve more episodes of season one to do. So we still. <laughs> We got a long way to go. George, how are you doing? Are you doing okay with all this? Like, are you, uh, like, do you want to jump out of a window? Like, you look like you're being held hostage. Uh, well, you know what? We'll talk about it on a day that's not Nick's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. special okay. day. Just say that you're having a great time. I'm having a great time. Good, I good. love <laughs> Alf. I'm a convert. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow because uh, it's, uh, uh, we're watching an hour long Alf episode <laughs> that aired on my birthday in 1987. It's their first clip show, and Chip Chantry, former VCR party guest, is coming on to talk about the Wayne Schlegel episode of Alf tomorrow night. Tune in. George, I have an idea for you. What if you paid Steve to dress up as you? And then just he just not, he just nods his head along with everything Nick says, just like yep, Elf did that all right, or something like that, or like Nick would not notice. Okay, and he's just like, hey, I got an Elf beach towel around here somewhere. Uh, In fact, I'll, I'll try it with I'll put a mop with my glasses on it, inverted on a chair for the next episode. Yes, do that. Yeah. In fact, I'm telling idea. him, and I still think he won't notice, but we'll see. Um, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Try it. About tomorrow night's show. Definitely try it. Um, so uh, do you guys remember Atlas Butler? Is that your service? Call 1-800-FURNACE. Okay, Absolutely. there was a commercial that had a great jingle. Mo C sent it to us. Uh, and it's, uh, but we love the commercial. Let me just play just a quick part from it. Soon as our ducks were clean, Devin stopped sneezing and coughing. My nose is for yuck anymore. Atlas Butler is at your service call. Great jingle, great commercial. My nose isn't full of yuck anymore. Steve says it all the time. It's his catchphrase. Mm -hmm. I decided I got to call somebody new to, to wish Nick a happy birthday. So I decided to call Atlas Butler. And uh, here's how that went. Probably a pretty Thank slow time for furnace up. companies. Uh, yeah, probably. Thank mm -hmm. you for calling Atlas Butler. This is Michaela speaking. How may I help you? Hey, uh, my name is Joe. I'm calling from a show called VCR Party. And my buddy Nick and I, we are big fans of your jingle. You know the jingle that you guys have? The Atlas Butler is at your service. Call 1-800-FURNACE. You know that one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to sing it every day before school. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's catchy. So my buddy Nick and I were, were big fans of it. We sing it all the time. And um, I'm wondering if it'd be possible. His birthday's coming up. I wonder if you could say happy birthday, Nick, from all of us here at Atlas Butler or something like that. And then actually, 
Yeah, yeah, like right now. But then I had I had another idea too, because have you seen the commercial where there's a little boy, he's probably like six or seven years old, and he goes, for, it's an Atlas Butler commercial, and he goes, my nose isn't full of yuck anymore. Have you have you seen that one? It's a it's and then it kicks into I the it. it kicks into the uh, the jingle right after that. So I'm wondering if it just maybe if you can say happy birthday, Nick. I hope your birthday is here. fun and I hope your nose isn't full of yuck anymore <laughs> from all of us here at Atlas Butler or something like that. All right, so happy birthday, Nick. Yep. Um, from, I hope your nose isn't full anymore. Full of yuck anymore. I'm sorry, I'm writing this down so oh, I can you, remember it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. Patient, and, patient. I'm, and I'm just going to record it, and then I'll play it for him on his birthday, and it'll totally make his day. Okay, yeah. All right, ready to, Ready when you are. Are you ready to go? I'll record right now. I'm recording. Ready. Yep, all right, cool. Go. Happy birthday, Nick, from all of us here at Atlas Butler Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Hope your nose isn't full of yuck anymore. <laughs> Perfect! Wow. Yeah, pretty lady too. Very yes. pretty. Lady. <laughs> wow, so many miracles! So I'm many touched. miracles happening on this birthday. It's an all-new miracle for this year. Just and you know what? That's not even the last miracle of today. Not even there's a like, follow-up miracle. That there's a, there's like two more miracles that are going to happen tonight. Wow. So. How about uh, how about some nice things to uh, break it up here? Let's do it. Um, Nick, I was thinking for nice things to break it up. Why don't you, because I got you three different presents. Why don't you open up one of them now? Okay. Because I got you nice things. Oh, great. So this could be part of this. It was yeah, just tear it open. Yep. And it's, there's three, there's these little bags. I don't know if there's any. Yeah, yeah. Just open up that one right there in your left hand. This, this one? Yep. Yep. Okay. Just tear it open. It's, don't uh, save the wrapping. Well, yeah. You All might right. want to. But I got you. Oh, boy. <laughs> We got a Wambo shirt. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. My size too. Yep. Put it on. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let me, well, I'll put it on by the end of the show. How about no, that? I, we'll put it on right now. We'll wait. I got a lot more. We can All edit right. out the, no, no, no. Take off your shirt. Your <laughs> no, no, no. Just, uh, no, because you're editing this episode. So I'll just do this. How about this? This will be kind of a fun. No, I can't do it with the mic. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll wear it for the next episode. This is uh, featured in TV's Plunkets and Practical Thumbs at Medieval Times. Wow. Yep. This is uh, something else. Thank you. I think it was Andres's, Andres's dad yes. was wearing the Wambo uh, shirt. With Andrews. Some really, uh, was and, it Andrews? Andrew, yeah. yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Well, right. uh, some, some uh, Melinda, some viewers sent in some nice things as well. Let me show some of those uh, here. We've got, uh, I believe Ken made this one or Kenny. Uh, K-E-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Um, they said that they were talking about how the show us for Ravioli's guy, who we didn't play uh, today, but uh, how he looks like the Lindo Man guy. And Joe, you're wearing that shirt from the Lindo Man video. He does. He totally looks like it. Yes, we so, got them in. The shirts are in. Look yeah. at it. We, They're we so sold good. so many of these already. Do we have any left? We we just put in another order. There's some orders okay. that haven't been filled. And I think that we'll have we'll still have a few left. Okay. After that, so if people want them, like, and this is limited. We're only we're only selling like a hundred of them, and then we're okay. closing up shop on them. But look at you can wear like a serial killer on your face or on yeah. your shirt. And he yeah. was a frozen man that school children so sang a song about. They found in a bog, preserved in. But I love the Lindo man. We want you back with yeah. the Richie Trio. Triolo? Triolo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is Theo, who was a guest uh, on our show showing um, video art in, in the past. Um, he uh, found a Geraldine and Ricky in the wild, and it was signed. Wow. And it says, please return. They forgot the <laughs> end. Uh, this is an Alaskan cruise they did, and please return. But nobody did. They took it to Goodwill. Well, did nice they run out of room for the end? I think so. I think they didn't okay. plan it. I wonder Geraldine. if on the side, maybe the end was on the spine. They didn't want to go over Geraldine's head. So yeah, they started the R, but it was by yeah, then it was too late. All right, this is uh, you know, we have uh, those tape boys, and Joe, you like the idea of having real human teeth on them. Well, um, Brian found this uh, in Aberdeen, Scotland. I think this is on Facebook Marketplace. You can get Harry Potter, but with human teeth instead of glasses. <laughs> so, way up north in Scotland, but it might be worth How much traveling is it? For. How much is it? Uh, Twenty-five. Uh, oh, that's a hell of a deal. I guess. Yeah. I don't really care about Harry Potter at all, but mm -hmm. uh, I care about that. Yeah, I just like <laughs> the idea of it. Um, 
Kara said that she made this as her work status. You know how you have those internal work things like Reich and, you know, Outlook and stuff. She uh, just put rocks are done, got to sleep by and was uh, hoping people would comment on it. But nobody did. HR didn't didn't check <laughs> in HR to see if didn't she was comment. OK. No, nope. she put a little grave there. Uh, yeah. So those are some nice things. George, I have a present nice thing from you. Should I open that here? Sure. It says, do not bend. This has been sitting here for a while. Wait, do or don't? It says don't. I think oh, don't. Not. There's a hard piece of cardboard in it. Okay. So. Oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh. It's an animation cell from the Elf animated series. <laughs> Oh, boy. wow. Oh, boy, his, his man-child cave is going to get even oh, more man-child. Yep. <laughs> Girlfriend's not going to be happy about this one. I'm That's delighted. Awesome. Holy cow, i got to frame this. I've, I've it, always wanted to have an animation cell. That is really great. And I was going to say, that's just such a memorable scene from the Elf cartoon, too. Like <laughs> oh, We all remember that dog. classic scene. Yeah. Well, we will when we get to season five of Police <laughs> Garage. <laughs> Wednesdays at 9 p.m. George, do you keep like a gun next to the computer the whole time just in case you can't take it anymore? Because that's, um, that's how I picture it. I'm, I'm holding a rope that is attached to a, a trigger that's on the other side of the room. Oh, okay. A shotgun. Because <laughs> <Kind of, laughs> I want it to be part of the show. I want it to be the big ending. Oh, you know, I might tune in then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any uh, other news? Open up, open up one of my presents. I'm open oh, up okay. One of my shirt. Should I do one of things. the bags? or? Uh, yeah, either one. Okay. There's one that I've been meaning to give you for like seven years. Oh yeah. <laughs> I finally remembered it. Yeah. This I think looks, it's this looks signed. Oh no. Oh yeah. Well, that one I just got oh. for you recently. You see Camp what it is? Cabbage? Yes, it's a Camp Cabbage Camp shirt. Camp Cabbage. Autographed. <laughs> Number one video from 2020 or 2020. Yes, autographed Xavier by Roberts. Uh, yes, by the X-Men. Wow. Yeah. And uh look at it. it's a what what kind of shirt is this? It's a jerseys? It's a jerseys large. Yeah, so jerseys. Yeah. Took me like a glove. Yeah, this is uh <laughs> put it on. Wow. Throw All it on. right. Well, why not? I didn't work out for sure again. But I, I'm wired to the computer, but why not? Let's try it out. Well, I'll, do, I'll tell you what, I'll do it for okay, next time. Okay. All right. Okay. Do three changes. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, who sent this? Uh, somebody sent this. I think it was Mark from Denver sent. He's been making these Valentine's Day cards with, that are like deep yes. cut found footage VCR party references. And this guy knows his stuff. And uh, I just wanted to show just a handful of them. We're going to put all of them up on our Patreon this week uh, so you can print them out and uh, uh, send them to loved ones. But here's one. It says, hey, Valentine, you're so hot. I'm surprised you haven't set off the sprinkler system by now. Anyways, <laughs> I picked up some munchies and special buzz juice if you catch my drift. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, you guys got the reference? You guys you pick up the reference? OK, I yep. don't have to explain it. OK, good. One, one, uh, one man one boy one man's struggle one what man's battle battle every man's every, every man's, man's battle. battle every man's yeah. struggle mm. it's Something like right like over that. here I, i'm not gonna go yeah over. All right, religious video question. about not watching pornography and whacking off yeah yeah uh dark lord blood uh satanic worshiper my soul may belong to you satan but my heart belongs to you wait did i read that right yeah nope. well, no. close <laughs> my heart <laughs> it's really small show I, I have like 15 <laughs> screens on here and oh, it's just yeah. tiny my soul may belong to Satan, but my heart belongs to We got to show this to Dark Lord Bud. I already I sent know. it to him. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talk frequently, actually. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, dude. Here's another one. I'm just incredibly rad thrilled that you're my oh. Valentine. What can I say? <laughs> Should have said that in the college show last week. Yes. A little, little oh, Marky little out there. there the He's on the love field, yeah. the field of love. Uh, all right, this one is uh, I give you five out of five Mickeys. Why? Because that's all I'm allowed to. Give. <laughs> I gotta send this to Mark, the kids. <laughs> yes, that's the one I'm choosing to give to my wife, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think this is the last one here, dear Valentin. I think you're simply plum awesome. Oh, that is uh, you got the club there. People don't and... know he's holding a stick there. That looks like it could be something else, uh, but that is a out of elimination, large... the first step. Uh, so something Mac dropped in the, the five footer. The could be, yeah. Okay. I was, yeah. You think it's something else, but anyway, oh. that's uh, it's a it's a club. <laughs> you were thinking, of, you were thinking of Dom. Valentine. See, that's that's funny. Yeah. That's the difference between you and me. I was right. thinking of Max five footer. You were thinking of a dong. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny. I guess nobody else probably got that. It was just and my dirty mind. Work. Yeah. Yet yeah. <laughs> we somehow make it work. Yeah. 
Any other nice things? Open up another one of my shirts. Super size, nice things. This is the one that I've been meaning to give you for seven years. I this is actually. For you, Nick. Whoa, America's funniest videos. Yeah, an AFV wow. shirt. Like this, this, this is, must have been like if you you know got an honorable mention and you didn't win the ten thousand dollars. That's what I assume. Shirt. Yeah, look, it says ABC on the side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they didn't Whoa. sell that at, at like Sears or something. No, no. Yeah. Wow, this is can't wait. Thank you. Yeah. These are some nice things. Awfully yeah. nice things. And then um, Nick, I got something for Nick. Um, I know you love uh, aliens, so I got you a, a ET. I'm going to have to shut off my background. Um, no, don't but, shut off your yeah. background. The background, no, please. I want to keep that up. Well, yeah. Yeah. Please don't. Put it down in front of your chest. Put it in front of your chest. There you go. So there it is. Oh, it's wow. ET. An ET ornament? It's from, yeah, it's a, uh, from 1983. Wow. And uh, yeah. Just in time for Christmas. Just in time for Christmas. Thank so you. I do love ET, and I love the ET puppet from that religious video we found. That's what I thought of. Yeah. The, yeah. I wanted to brief. I have a nice thing. This is. Uh, I got a board game out. It's called uh, Dream Crush, and uh, it's Mondo published this this week. It's in stores this week, and it's uh, based on '80s and '90s slumber party games, but modernized um, with all sorts of. Uh, you know, different genders and hunks, and uh, it's it's for it's not just for girls' slumber parties anymore. You can play a game and win your favorite hunk, and uh, it's more about the little things in relationships and datings that bother you, like the little things you can't put your finger on, but might be might bother you, but not your friend. So um, I'm actually going to do a live play right after tonight's show at like 10:30, with uh, so you can see how it works. If anybody's interested in in playing Dream Crush. It's uh, it'll be fun. We have some VCR party guests going to play with me uh, tonight. Nice. That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's like a dream for you. Like you've been a lifelong uh, board game person and uh, yeah. you finally get to make one. Yeah, I grew up playing party games. And now, Joe, you and I and Steve, too, plays a lot of hobby games. George has gotten into the fold, too. George has played some hobby games with so us. You guys play D&D. &D. Like, yes, you George D&D &D now. Yes. Thursday, we played Dungeons and Dragons. So yeah, to have actually a board game out is, is pretty sweet. So I hope people will, will dig it. It's yeah. been working on it for over a year. So I, I can't wait to get it in people's hands. I played the prototype with you or, and uh, I, 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 was, I loved it, A, and then B, it's so much fun about what you learn about other people. Like, even if you don't know them, if you're getting together in the group, you just learn so much. Right. Like you could learn if somebody like does, like for example, you know, if you learn that somebody makes like, loud um mouth noises when they eat could you go on that. a could you go out to dinner with them you know and, and like some people that doesn't bother them at all and some people that that could really do it or like let's say they have a coexist bumper sticker on the back of their prius for some or let's say they wear a t-shirt that says feminist some people great other people that might not work it might so, be a deal breaker yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, you do find out a lot about your friends. And, and it's a good looking game, too. I bought so many board games over the pandemic that I don't play that I just like yeah. bought because the cover looked cool. I know. Like, the, <laughs> so the, the guy Mondo is known for their like poster art and stuff. The Alamo Draft House, by the way, runs Mondo and they, they're mostly known for poster. So the poster artists are a group called We Buy Our Kids. But then uh, the graphic designer I was working with, who like actually designed the like the cards and stuff and all the backgrounds he uh, a guy named chris bilheimer and i've been working with him for a few months and going back and forth and then i read about his credits he designed rem's monster like the album cover oh wow and uh neutral milk hotels in the airplane under the sea oh, no and, shit. yeah oh, and did wow. all, all that uh stuff out of athens georgia and um so yeah pretty good pedigree on the design so even if you don't like the game it looks good on a shelf and uh, there's a huge elf component to the game too, right? The, That's like, a there's surprise. a huge. <laughs> okay. There is one surprise. There's one person in here who I can't mention, but uh, is a legit bona fide celebrity who you'd recognize from a movie that is one of the crushes you may find in the game. So, wow, it's a secret. That's star power. It is a secret, yeah. That's nice things, unless anybody has anything else. George, uh, weird things? What's this uh, thing yeah, I see in I'm contemplating a new segment, uh, new sub segment of nice things called <laughs> weird things. Uh, where it's I believe it'd like, be a sub corner. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> the corner within the corner. Uh, oh, it's nice, but it's a little weird, or maybe it's not even nice at all. But there's this thing I've been finding since I'm on Amazon all the time now where the image does not match the, um, 
the item being sold. And I looked up the other day, I remembered a type of burrito I used to eat, a frozen burrito. I thought I'd try to order it. Turns <laughs> it out it was discontinued. Was just, it wasn't always just power bars for you? <laughs> frozen uh, burritos too, huh? Yeah, well, it was 1.5 grams of fat per burrito. That's pretty amazing. But it's been discontinued. But I, I mm. looked it up and this is what I found. Um, this was the image. <laughs> Cedar Lane low fat cheese rice and bean burrito. Currently what? unavailable. Um, so that's not the way I remember that burrito looking, mm. <laughs> but it took me a long time to figure out what that is. And what is that? What do you guys think that is? Uh, Anti-snoring device. Some sort of like jaw brace. Uh, it, it turns out it's an anti-snoring object, but um, but I really thought it was it was going to turn out to be some sort of like S and M thing, or I don't know what. I, like <laughs> you a, had your fingers crossed. I ordered um, five anyway, but um. how much would you guys pay to look at George's Google search history? Like, oh. how much? Maybe if there's yeah, like a charity I'd go the fundraiser. Way. I'd go really? not to pay it. Yeah, it would keep me up at night. <laughs> me and too. Yeah. Uh, hey, there, this is this is already a long show, and it's about to get longer. Um, oh boy! There's a uh, birthday greeting from uh, Funny Man Steve Hyde. We know him. We love him. He's uh, he recorded a bunch of this is maybe like 15 years ago. We recorded a bunch of uh, hilarious outgoing answering machine messages, and he does so many different celebrity impressions. And Nick, today for your birthday, he did wow. some of your favorites. He did some of your favorites here. So, so take a look. music critic, prestigious music critic. He's and... actually like a respect. Yeah, he's written several books, and uh, yeah, he writes for Up Rocks. So, uh, but and then he humiliates this, himself. This is him. Okay. Yep. Um, excuse me, has anyone Video. seen uh, someone who can clean up the Capitol here? Uh, I think we need someone to help clean up the Capitol building. I heard that there was a Capitol maid ordered by Trump. Or was that Capitol raid? Check, please. Hi, it's your pal. I don't get it. Funny man. <laughs> and I just want to say happy birthday to Nick. What, 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 what? Ooh, boy. I am mad thrilled that it's your mad birthday, thrill. and I heard that you like some impressions, <laughs> and fortunately, the funny man is here, because who are you going to call? Laugh Busters. Ooh. So, uh, I understand that you're a fan of uh, a guy that I like. His name is uh, <laughs> Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Where's my bike? Yeah, he's really great. I love Pee Wee, but not as much as... Another funny man who's a big... The best parts are his transitions where he gets out of them and he's like, anyway... I love him, but I, you know who I love even more? <laughs> that's probably man, enough, actually. Of... <laughs> no, 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 there's like four more minutes. Hey, a guy by the name of Weird Al. I'm fat, I'm fat, you know it. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> but if we're going to talk about Al, we're almost all the way to another very funny alien life form known as Alf. Get it? A-L-L, A-L-F, Alf. Oh, that's George's I kill background. Me. Give me a cat. I'm Alf. This is my nose. <laughs> and I know you like to have fun because we're having fun right now, aren't we, buddy? It's true, I do. What, 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 what? <laughs> but you like to have fun with something called a board game, and you're a fan <laughs> of the guy, Eric Lang. I am Eric yep. Lang, and I <laughs> oh, this that board is game. Such a good Eric Lang. have fun. Who can be mad at that? No one, I don't think. Anyway, <laughs> yes. still looking for someone to clean Canadian up Canadian designer capital. of blood rage. The That's just so him. I mean, raid. Call back. Funny man's getting political 2021. Anyway, <laughs> great to see you, Nick. I love you. And what, 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 what? Later, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Where was his wife Val during this? That's what I want to know. Uh, he he went down to his office and closed the door. Okay, he didn't want it. <laughs> Could yeah. she kind of hear it? I wonder. Or she like, do you I, think he's I, like, "Han, where's my sport jacket"? <laughs> I, I kind of wonder if that could ruin his career too. Like, yeah, if, somebody, if that gets out and somebody saw that, I though, mean, his publisher <laughs> just dropped him. I think uh, they should. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, funny man Steve Hyden. Wow, what a birthday this has been. Um, okay, I got another... not just me, but others. Yeah, no, every, it's a humiliation of fun. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I made another phone call. Okay. This is an annual one. 
This is um, I would just say next birthday, put some of these behind the paywall. Just to, you know, like have a, <laughs> maybe five dollar and up patrons can watch some of the phone calls. Uh, you know. Oh, but that's go- not a bad idea because I, I recorded way too many. After I got that Red Robin success, I was just like, oh, bring them all on, right and high. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I, figure I have my secret now. I call Fridays at around three hmm. thirty when like the the weekend is in sight. You know, like they're excited to get out for the weekend, so everybody's in a good mood on Friday at three thirty. Right. So uh, I called it Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Remember, I called them up. Do you, do you remember the, the commercial? Let me just play the commercial for you. Good refresher. Yeah. Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Don't suffer in silence. Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Don't suffer in silence. Great commercial. Mm-hmm. Great jingle. We got obsessed with it. The first year I called them up and they gave one of the best birthday greetings of all time. You know, it was I just like, that one. They, yeah, happy birthday. They did the whole thing. And then uh, last year I got somebody and they weren't into it at all. They were like, I'm, I can't say that. I got to talk to my manager. It, it didn't right. go over well. So I was skeptical about this year. Like, how will this year go? And here's how this year went. Hey, my name is Joe Pickett. I am calling from VCR Party. I've called you the last couple of years. Uh, it's kind of become a tradition where um, I ask you guys if you will sing happy birthday to my, or not sing happy birthday, but like say happy birthday to my buddy Nick. Um, and uh, is that something, would you be able to do it again this year? It's, it's, he looks forward to it every year. <laughs> the phone is cutting now. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. Can you say that again? She's yeah, yeah, sure. So you. my buddy, wait, what's that? She's apologizing to you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This must have been important. What? I need to yeah, make yeah, sure, sure I hear so every word of this. My buddy Nick's birthday's coming up, and the last couple of years, I've asked, I've called up and had you guys say "Happy Birthday, Nick" from all of us at Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center, and it just it makes his day. And uh, his birthday's coming up on Tuesday here. I'm wondering if you can just do uh, do it again. Oh no! The just to say happy birthday, Nick. From you live for the moment of uh, <laughs> you want me. That's the moment you live for. That's like your adrenaline. Like, oh, I'm flying high right now. Yeah, I'm flying real it's your, high. Like right spice now. from the from Dune or something. It's like, all right, go ahead. Just to say happy birthday, Nick, from all of us at Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sweet. Thanks. All right, uh, I'm ready to go when you are. I'm uh, I'm recording this, so here we go. Happy birthday, Nick, from all of us at Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Yes. Oh, that was the best one yet. Wow. They called in other people to do it. That's amazing. I would, if I had hemorrhoids, I would go there. I'm just going to give them an unsolicited endorsement. No, when you get hemorrhoids, you're going right. to go there. It's only a matter of time. Yep. You're going to uh, hop on the plane. I'm going to tell you <laughs> to say something. To <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Oh, Can't man. wait to get to Midrise Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Uh, I'm not <laughs> suffering in silence anymore. Can't, and uh, my daughters in spirit and Curtis Ann encourage me to do it. The, the phone call actually went on for a lot longer because I told her about Zach's song that, that oh. Zach had written a full song about Midwest Hemorrhoid yes. Treatment Center with the lyrics and everything, not just the jingle, but he wrote the lyrics in between. And I said, would you guys like to hear it? And I said, yes, absolutely. They gave me their email address. And then I asked them if the, the song for Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center was sung by Otis and they didn't mm-hmm. know. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of build up for not knowing. They didn't know. Yeah. So, well, I uh, I think it's time for that it done. We got to do a quick one here. Yeah, let's do it. That's it. That it done. Right there. Okay, John wrote in and said, would it be possible to get a birthday shout out for Ruby? If possible, we'd like another brief clip from the fish face comedian that was featured on last week's episode. Yeah, oh, the Daniel Songer, right? That's the guy's name. Daniel Songer. Tim sent this. He, he um. What what do you guys remember from Daniel Songer last week? What what were your thoughts now that like the seed has been planted? What I like what do you guys think? He should go on tour with Funny Man. They should do like a <laughs> comedians 
the greatest comedians dot mpeg tour he's yes. very funny man absolutely all right so this one tim sent it he goes he's spoofing something here songer is spoofing something it's mm. not abundantly clear but wait until the end and then we'll all guess what he's spoofing i don't know okay. if it's gonna be obvious to you guys or not i knew the answer to it but let's see um, if i know yeah all right and by the way this is uh daniel songer number 238 this is his 238th comedy, comedy routine comedy routine hey comedian entertainer daniel songer back here with a condom smile yes that's it comedy at 238 condom smile Hey, you know what, guys? I have never been... Transitions. Again, the tr transitions are the best. <laughs> ...one to go out to a lady and just say, you know, just, just even to say, you know, hey, I, I want to talk dirty to you, you know? What? Let alone, you know, going up to a lady and say, do you want to do something dirty with me? <laughs> you know, I just have never been that kind of man, you know? <laughs> but when I was a teenager, I would walk up to a pretty girl and I'd say, do you want to screw? Yeah, I'd open my hand and Count there you. lies a screw. Yeah, you know, but today, oh, cool. today. He threw it at the. Cool, threw I just the, threw it down. He doesn't care whose toes he I think he hit the tripod too. You can kind of hear it. <laughs> yeah, you know, but today, today, I'm telling you, man, you don't even have to open your hand. Condom smile, condom smile, yeah, you don't even have to open your hand. Do you guys know what it is, what he's talking about? No. Do you know what he's spoofing here? Melts in your mouth, not in your hands? No, 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 hey, mm -hmm. let him do it again, let him do it again, watch closely. Condom smile, <laughs> your hand, oh, condom Gangnam smile, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is really recent. You never would have guessed that, Steve? Never. Okay. It's like, hey, do you want to do something dirty? Yeah, I mean, it's just, woo! I'm telling you, explosion! Condom smile! Hey, again. thank you, Daniel Songer! Yes, I am! And slowly walk over. <laughs> wow, his, his neighbors are very patient people. I was going to say, he's broadcasting that to like probably a mile radius. That routine. Yeah. 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 So um, happy birthday, Ruby. Who 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 irritates you more? Yeah, <laughs> that was a birthday. Thing. Happy birthday. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ruby. Hope uh hope your condom smiles uh really good. Um, who's more irritating, funny man or uh songer? Funny Ooh. man because he knows better. Yeah, that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, hey, let's watch the part two of my uh thrilling interview with uh Nick's sister Jess. Um is this exclusive too, or this is absolutely exclusive? I get okay. so much more information out of her here, and the you know, of course, the full version is going to be on sixty minutes. All right, now these are questions that I like. I don't think Nick is going to like that I asked <laughs> because I wanted to ask your mom about him one time, and Nick was like, "I don't want you to ask my mom about this." Okay, I, feel like I can ask you this. We, we have to leave in two minutes. Okay. Okay, I'll make them very. Wherever quick. we are, I'm hopping off. <laughs> uh, Jess, have you ever shoplifted before? Uh <laughs> No, never. Nope. Did your parents raise you, you and Nick, to be shoplifters? Nope. Okay. Did they teach you that cutting corners is better than working hard? Uh, no, but one of us did and learned that it works sometimes. That's right. I was going to ask you, <laughs> why did Nick shoplift that uh, Incredible Hulk Sega game in 1994? Did you hear about how I cried and cried and defended him to my parents that there's no way he could have done it? When he what? called home. Yeah, I was crying and I said, there's no way he did that. Um, you have to believe him. Um, and, oh, and then Nick, have you apologized for this? I think he did, actually. Oh, I, did needed, I needed that Hulk game. I think. <laughs> and I stand uh, by that the same way I stand by not letting you go to the bathroom. One of his, yeah. Themselves. Are you aware of the following things about Nick? Ooh. Recently on a Saturday morning cartoons, he mentioned that he doesn't like to sleep naked. I saw it and I had, I, I, I had to, I had to turn it off. Okay, so when he when he talks like about stuff like that <sighs> on on the shows, what like do you, do you actually shut it off or hit mute? Like yes. Okay, 
All right. I can't. I, I, uh. um, did you know he's banned from all shopcos? Because they don't want him to steal any more Hulk, incredible Hulk games. I put Good. him out of business. Good. <laughs> uh, did you know once at a mall bathroom, he was checking to see if a stall was available, and there was an old man in there, and the old man in the stall called Nick a pervert. Oh, wow. That's a new one. Thank you, you Joe. One. Thank wow. you. Wow. Yeah. Man, I, and, and I personally think that Nick was a pervert, though. Like, I think he did want to watch yeah, the old man the take the Ten-year-old trying to use the bathroom was a <laughs> yep. pervert. Yep. This sure. has been very illuminating, but George Thank and I you, have to go play Dungeons That's and all my questions. <laughs> all <laughs> right. All, Thanks, Jess. Bye. Yep. Yeah, nice to meet Thank you. you. Bye. There it is. And that's I, exclusive. Yep. That's <laughs> I'm I'm like morally safer, aren't I? I'm like a, You're really, I'm like a Walter Cronkite. Like it really I'm, ties into Nick's birthday perfectly, right? I mean, there's just a natural, you know, mm-hmm. celebration it, there. It exactly. Makes sense. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. What a what a, what an evening. <clears throat> um, all right. We have one more birthday greeting and um even you're exhausted by this yeah i somehow i managed to make this your birthday about me yeah i think that i'm (laughs) i think i'm I'm in most of the videos here tonight (laughs) um all right so uh this is uh a certain person that we all know and love friend of the show Mm -hmm. um a guy named uh craig and you might know him better as Dark Lord Blood. Here's just a quick <gasps> clip of Dark Lord Blood. Whoa. From the video that we got, I think it was taped off a of TV. You got it at an estate sale. It's a talk of the town show. And he was a guest on this talk of the town show. The studio is the Dark Lord Blood, who is a seventh generation satanic worshiper. Nicole, but it's him. also being sold for healthy reasons. Man, what's healthy about selling a knife to bits of bits? All right. Here he is. I have been summoned. Hark, there's a special occasion upon the earth. It's Nick's birthday. This is Dark Lord Blood, a.k.a. Worldly God. And sometimes just plain old Craig. <laughs> I want to wish him a happy 49th birthday. I'm so happy. Do you know why? Because the pages of the book of your life now are becoming less and less. And you keep growing closer to me. (laughs) Can't wait to greet you. Now, being as it's your birthday, I want to make a special deal just for you. I've heard you're a fan of Elf, and I happen to have a <laughs> an Elf ashtray, uh, slightly used, <laughs> an and it's on tray. sale for eleven dollars. You sell to you for eleven bucks. Wow, that's I'll do, I'll take it. I'll t- I'll pay you eleven dollars. I wasn't pausing there either. That was his long silence okay. after he said eleven dollars. Listen to this, <laughs> and it's on sale for eleven dollars. Hold for applause. <laughs> Let me know what you think. <laughs> wow. Otherwise, happy birthday, Nick. I'll try not to dirty this up too much. <laughs> Actual Dark Lord blood. Wow. Just, I, I don't yes. know how he does that. He, I mean, like, he's just using his computer, Mike. He's not, like mic'd up and it's that powerful of a growl no he did it on his computer i think this morning actually. that's unbelievable yeah, yeah. well no, i will he has buy an that actual like album. yeah <laughs> it's for, for 11 dollars <laughs> huge pause <laughs> he's waiting for me to answer <laughs> it's like rent a friend um, all right uh, i have one this is my big finale gift to you i mean i don't know how i could do better than the wambo shirt no i don't either. I did okay so uh Mark from Denver, who, who made those uh, Valentine's Day cards for us, he had an idea. He emailed me. He said, I have an idea for Nick's birthday present. He told me he's in Denver. He told me about Vegan Van, which is a food truck. It's a popular vegan fast food truck in Denver. And mm-hmm. they've been hurting badly. 
and they had a, a bunch of employees get COVID. And he's like, they're looking for people to get gift certificates. Maybe you could get Nick a gift certificate for when you guys are back on the road. You guys can go to Vegan Van when you're in Colorado and Denver next. Sure. And uh, here, here's here's what they look like here. As far as we haven't been there. We've been to other vegan restaurants in Denver. And oh, I is, like it. Classic. Yes. And this is such a Nick Pruer place. Like this is like, it yeah. reminds me of uh, the food swings or that place that we went to yeah. you know, all the time in uh, Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, he, he said they could really use some gift certificates. So I, I, I took Mark's advice and I got you a really big gift certificate, big wow. by our standards, right. you know, so that every time we go back there, we can have uh, lunch and dinner there. And, uh, but I, it was Thank a you. big amount. It was a big amount. And so I wanted some things in return. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to just, you know, give them so it wasn't the, out the goodness of your heart. I, I wanted some content. I yeah. want some content out of this. So, um, the first thing I, I, I talked to Brittany on the phone and I said, I asked, I said, can you put a banner of Nick from the red Robin photo on the side mm. of the van? And we're, I, I propose that we do this this summer when there's more people around. Cause in the winter, right. there's not going to be as many people. So it would look, it would uh, look like that. Like this is what I asked, put a okay. banner on the side of Nick from Red Robin uh -huh. for like a week or however long. Well, it means so, a lot to me, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> well, no, no, there's more. There's, there's oh, two stipulations. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, second, their menu, it's such a Nick Pruer menu because it's all like junk food. It's all like fast food, you know, like it's like great tasting stuff. It's not like the usual, like the sausage the, and pancake on a stick. Great. Exactly. They got shit like that. Love it. Yeah. Uh, I asked if they could put, put something on the menu called the Melinda. Oh, and, you know, and, and uh, you know, you could decide what what it is, you know, right. Uh, and then, you know how an ice cream truck, how they, how they play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> play to my hat. Uh oh, I see where <laughs> this is going. <laughs> you know like Mr. I, Softy will play the jingle. They'll the, play like uh, a little song like, uh -huh. while they're driving around. Yes, and sure. They usually, these things are usually equipped with a speaker. Yeah. And do you remember the song that your uh, girlfriend made? Vegan, called vegan, vegan, vegan man. man. <laughs> yeah, I recall vegan, that. Vegan yeah. man. Yeah. Vegan, vegan man. He don't eat no meat or dairy. Vegan, vegan man. <laughs> vegan, vegan. Okay, you yep. remember that? I do, yeah. So, so what I asked them, the third part of the proposition was that when they drive around the, the food truck, or maybe when they're just even just staying there, that they, will, that they will crank this song that uh, your girlfriend and uh, Bob from Hall put together. Vegan, Green vegan man. band, vegan, vegan band, vegan, man. vegan band. They don't cook no meat or dairy. Vegan, <laughs> vegan <laughs> band, vegan, oh, vegan boy. band, vegan, you vegan band. Got a girlfriend involved in they this. They don't cook no meat or dairy. <laughs> vegan, vegan band. And it goes out like that. Um, oh, boy. And, wow. And so I sent this proposition. I said, Brittany, what do you think? Yeah. Can we, can we get this done? And yeah. she said, yeah, absolutely. It sounds, it sounds fine. She did, she did not bat an eye at any of it. I probably didn't even have to get the gift certificate. Wow. Like, yeah, you have, she was just like, yeah. it for free. Yeah. She's like, yeah, everybody's sure in a good it. mood. Co you know, the vaccine's out. I think that's it. It's, we're turning a corner here. You know, so. and I called it Friday at 3.30. So, yeah. you know. Well, I hope to get to that vegan, vegan van soon. We get vaccinated. We get back out on the road. So Yes. All right. Thank so that's you. all. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, that's not all, because this weekend, it's Valentine's Day episode of Saturday Morning Cartoons. We'll be watching Lori Gets a Computer Date from Partridge Family 2200 AD uh, with Caitlin McGurk from the uh, Billy Ireland Cartoon Library Museum. Uh, we got a special birthday episode of Willie's Garage tomorrow night. Um, EP Mode. That was so fun, wasn't it? It was. A lot of comments, a lot of chatter. This is just for patrons at the $10 and up level. Worth doing it for Bad Movie Month. People are going to like this. Oh, yeah. It's it's uh, maintenance by any means. It's so painful of a movie to get through. We're about to get to, I think, the second worst part. Uh, yeah. The week after that is going to be the, the number one worst the absolute part. worst part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this week is going to be bad. It's going to, yeah. So That'll drop Thursday. Uh, and then tonight, right after the show, stick around and uh, play this uh, or watch us play this on YouTube. Um, all right. I, so, you know, Frank Worley, right? Yeah. You know how uh, he sings songs for um, all sorts of holidays and events and stuff. Um, and, but he doesn't sing one for birthdays. I went looking. I was up late last night 
and I finally found it. he actually does do he does do a happy birthday song. Oh, he did the karaoke videos for senior homes, and there was a her birthday one. Exactly. Amazing. Yes, exactly. So okay. his birthday one, we're gonna end on that. So that's all that's it. If we had been prepared, we could have done better. And we'll be right back right after that. My nose isn't full of yuck anymore. And remember to email us if you want a poster. The train, the trip, the gear. Happy birthday, Nick! <laughs> Nick, you are the birthday boy. This is Harvey Sid. Hey, Nick. This is, uh, today you turn 45 years old. Frank oh, Early. yeah, Nick, it's your birthday. I was just a shock. 45 you years huh. old and you have an elf coat. Hey, Nick. From all of us huh. here at VCR Party, we hope on your birthday you have lots and lots of great sex. And that it feels very, very good on both you and your lover's private parts. It's your birthday and you deserve it and you're sexual. And, well, that's, uh, that's basically about it. So have a good one and happy birthday, buddy. We all love you. And very, very birthday boy. When we return, Dr. Selmer will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all, that's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep, bye. That's it, that it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a my nose is for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Cheerio. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Nice, nice. Goodbye. <laughs>